Peace be with you. It's good. God is good. A time. A time. God is good and that is special. Wow. Yes, today we are here. We are so happy to celebrate our sisters who today are renewing their consecration, their religious consecration. And one of our sisters, Sister Beatrice, who is saying yes to the Lord. And Sister Beatrice, for some years, mulikuwa mmekuja hapa mkashuhudia akifanya nadhiri zake za kwanza amekaa miaka kadhaa aki akirinio hizo hiyo miito alafu leo amesema ameamua kabisa kumtumikia Mungu kumtumikia Bwana katika shirika la wafamilia na ndio maana leo ametualika tushuhudie kuwa ameamua kwa hivyo leo tunaungana na yeye na masisa wetu wawili sisa Patricia and sisa Rebecca wakisherekea jubili silva jubili kumaanisha wamekaa miaka ku, miaka 25 tangu wachukue nadhiri zao za kwanza kwa hivyo leo wana wanasema na wanashukuru Mungu kwa vile wa wakati huu kwa hiyo na ningependa kualika nyinyi wote katika sherehe hii mapadre watao watu wote mnakaribishwa and in a special way i want to invite bishop rodrigo major who will guide us through this celebration on behalf of our delegate superior sister rebecca who is one of those who are celebrating the silver jubilee I welcome you all in this celebration. Feel most welcome. Thank you. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, the promise to Abraham is, and his descendants that they should inherit the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. That is why all depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be granted to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope, he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told. So shall your descendants be. That is why his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, Lord, forever singing your praise. The Lord be with you. And with your 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jacob was the father of Joseph the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with the child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to send her away quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call him his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. The Gospel of the Lord. We want to be sure that sister is with us, those are not even unfitting where she is, so that uh, if she is present, she will tell us what she really wants, wants to do today. And so I will invite Sister Caroline, who is the mistress of the temporary professed sisters, so she will call her and if she is present, she will come here in front and the bishop will question her. Sister Beatrice from Boy Movement. Sister Beatrice from Boy Munyue is the daughter of Mr. Paul Munyue and Mrs. Lucy Nyangura Munyue. She comes from Nyahururu Diocese, Engineer Party. She joined the congregation in July 2008, and in her formation, she studied early childhood education at Dean's Teachers College. On 21st March 2015, she made her first professional vows at the Central House Community Parent. She then continued with her studies in the Public University of East Africa, where she pursued her degree in Bachelor of Arts. She has worked as a receptionist in Maria Domenica Dispensary, and currently she's working at St. Aloysius Gonzaga Secondary School in Langata. Yeah. 
My dear sister, what do you ask of God and His Holy Church? I desire to follow Christ, my brethren, in this religious family of the sister ministers of the sea of St. Camerons, and to persevere in my religious community until the end of my life. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, Tum Sifu Jesu Christo. Tum Sifu Tena. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. With these words from the Son, we start this night nice ceremony today, in this beautiful morning, because really, it's a day that the Lord has made. We are celebrating what He has made. And precisely, we celebrate that which He has made in the lives of Sister Patricia and Sister Rebecca for 25 years. All they have done is just the work of the Lord, the work of grace, the work of the Spirit. The commitment of Sister Beatrice today is also a work from the Lord. That is why with all reason we say this is the day that the Lord has made. And in those occasions that the common thing that they have despite the distance in time 25 years in religious life I just heard that this entered in 2015 and now taking for the first time and the unique time her final profession. There is distance in time, but there is no difference in commitment. If the same is the vows. And a very short reflection on the meaning of religious vows is fitting today. We may think, why is it, starting with the question, why is it that all religious men, women, conventual, contemplative, active, apostolic, all the same, all religious, take the same vows? Being so different, different religious families, different religious congregations, but they take the same vows. They have different founders, different charisma different ministries, but they take the same vows, poverty, chastity, and obedience. Why is it that? And the response as was given to us very well by the Second Vatican Council in the decree of religious consecrated life. He underlined something that has always been in the church a truth, but perhaps we had been forgotten that or taking it for granted. What is it? It's a fundamental truth that religious consecration with the vows is rooted in our baptism. We all here have been baptized. With the same baptism, there is no special baptism for religious. There is no special baptism to become a bishop or a pope. The pope baptism is the same of our baptism. And in this baptism, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit under the three main virtues that we know very well, the theolog theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. This is what we receive in the grace of baptism for the first time in our life. The gifts of faith, the gift of hope, the gift of love. Without faith, hope, and love, there is no Christianity. 
without faith, love, hope, and love, our doctrine, our faith would be incomplete. They are like the three pillars, fundamental pillars sustaining the whole building of our faith. Now, on these three pillars, like the three stones in the village that support the cooking pot, these three are together and they can be lived in many different ways. As lay people in the world and in marriage, there is also need to love, to pay, hope and love. The three virtues are present there and live in a family-like style of life. And if these virtues are strong, the family and the marriage will be stable and it will be perdurable. But there are different ways, and a different way is in consecrated life. How are related the three virtues of faith, hope, and love to the three vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience? That is what I want to consider in front of you today. Faith, if we look in the scripture, or our father in faith, the first one, Abraham. We call him the father of all believers, the one who believed the first in God. How did he believe? By obedience, by obedience to the will of God. Leave your father, leave your mother, leave your countryside and come and follow me, I will go and send you to a country that I will show you. In marriage also, you have to leave your father and your mother, and you will be one and start a new family. Obedience is therefore the main characteristic of faith. And that is why the religious leave their faith as obedience. In the sense that when a superior commands any religious, we believe in our faith that God is using the superior as an instrument to manifest his will. We don't obey because the superior is very intelligent, or has many diplomas, or is very highly qualified, or it has a lot of experience. That may help or not. But whoever it is, young or old, new or old, when we obey in religious life, our obedience is based on faith. It's an act of faith that sees in the person of the superior the person of Christ, the person of God. We don't need any angel. We don't need any angel like the poor Joseph. He had no superior, and God has to send an angel even in dreams to manifest to him the will of God. But today, instead of angels in dreams, God sends superiors in reality in daily life. This is the way a religious lives his or her faith, as an act of believing that God uses human beings, defective, limited, sinners like all the others, but chosen by him to guide, to manifest to us his will. It's an act of faith. It's not because of administration, or because of efficiency, because of organization, or because of discipline. All these things go together and are good. But the root cause of obedience is a vision 
of faith. The same happened with the vow of hope. Hope in God. He is our ultimate hope. We know that it is a risk to put our hope in human beings alone. We know that those who put their hope in riches, in the power of the world, in prestige, in human influences, they not, cannot succeed their life. All these money, power, riches may fail. Only God is our rock and our salvation. And that is why the vow of poverty is precisely an act of hope in God alone. It's to put our confidence in the providence of God. And in this even Abraham is a mother. Because when God asked him the great sacrifice of Isaac, his son, of course, as a father, he was attached to his son. That is human and is normal. It was very costly for him, but he was ready to obey and to go to sacrifice. And Isaac raised the question. We have the fire, we have the, the wood for the sacrifice, but what is the victim? And father, father Abraham, without embarrassment, gave a wisdom in the response. God will provide. This a very short vow of poverty for the first time in the history of salvation. God will provide. Let us not be anxious as Jesus talked in the Sermon of the Mountain, according to Matthew, what we will eat, what we will use to rest, being anxious to survive, or being attached to what we have, more attached to our things, our possessions, our places of work, even attached to our work and our ministry. Poverty is an act of interior freedom. To be free from all attachment to created things in order to be attached only to God. Only to put our hope in Him and not in money. And that is a risk, of course. A risk because that implies that we are emptying ourselves from all our securities, from all our assurances. Religious life is not an insurance company. Religious life implies a lot of risk in the apostolates, and especially, I would say, for the congregation of the sisters, family and sisters of the sick. So that in, even in the formula of the vows, they commit themselves to the service of the sick, the poor, even to the risk of their own health. That is poverty. To be ready to give everything to God. Not only money, not only things, objects that you can purchase, but even your health and even your life. Many people think that the great poverty of Christ was in Bethlehem. It was a social poverty, but temporary. The real poverty of Christ, his vow of poverty was on the cross, when he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, and he died. That is the spirit of hope to put our hands in the, in the hands of, to put our life in the hands of God. That is the link between hope and poverty. And finally, law. Law and chastity go together. Because the law of chastity implies renunciation. Renunciation to marriage, renunciation to the satisfaction 
of having children, the satisfaction of starting a new family, which is a human and legitimate satisfaction wanted by God. If the religious renounce to marriage, it's not because marriage is sinful and bad, but it's impure. We cannot renounce to that because of that. It is in view of a higher value of love. What justifies marriage is love. And what ju justifies the renunciation to marriage has to be love to us. Love that is declared universal, open to all. Love that is not circumscribed to a family, a man or a woman, a husband or a wife, but not only to the children, not only to my extended family, my clan, my large family, but to every child of God, every human being. Not only in the Catholic Church, believer or unbeliever, all we are children of God. And that love is manifested in service. They take a vow of serving the sick, not just the Catholic sick, all the sick, belonging to any tribe, to any society, to any country, to any religion, because those who are suffering are the sacrament of Christ. I was sick and you visited me. Without this law, the vows of, ch of chastity could be even an act of egoism. I don't get married, and that happens sometimes in our society even today. People renounce to marriage because they are afraid or they want to get rid of the responsibilities of marriage. That is egoism. This is not love. It's not the same to be consecrated than to be single. The consecrated are single in order to be for others, not for themselves. Love is the root of chastity. Love makes that different more sublime. For those who are called, as Jesus said in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 9, because of the kingdom of God. And that is reality that we are celebrating today. They are invisible realities. If I don't explicit them in front of you, nobody can realize that this is happening today. That Sister Beatrice is on committing herself in this triple way until the end of her life, as she said at the beginning. Until then. Therefore, let us give thanks to God. It's a great thing to see how God is faithful. And by celebrating the silver jubilee of Sister Rebecca and Sister Patricia, we are, of course, congratulating them, encouraging them, rejoicing with them, because of the gift of God that has been given to them. Because the grace that has been given to them, can, we can say with some Paul, the grace they received has not been wasted, has not been given in vain. 25 years in religious life is a history of faithfulness, of perseverance, of the action of God. By the way, 25 years is not easy in life. By coincidence, I am so happy today to be with them and with all of you celebrating this Eucharist for a small personal reason. I am also celebrating this one jubilee. It is, don't, don't clap because it's really small. Today, I mean, in 
this month, week of March, 15 years ago, I was consecrated bishop. Here, yeah. see your silver jubilee. Mabati jubilee. But even if it's Mabati jubilee, I give thanks to God. So, together with Joseph, the man of faith, the man of hope, the man of love, a model of religious life, imagine. It can be our model. He did not write anything, any constitution. He did not found any religious family. He did not preach any time. If we were to celebrate in his own way this day, it would be silence the whole day. Because he never spoke in the gospel. But he believed, he obeyed, and he loved. And because of that, really all Christians, not only religious, but all Christians and religious orders them in a greater grain, we can consider Joseph our patron of consecrated life because he was consecrated to his mission. Let us pray through his intercession and through the intercession of many that the blessing of God the Father may reach the sisters that are going and renewing their vows 25 years and Sister Vitri that is pronouncing her final vows today may be blessed that word. Joseph is the great example of simplicity, simplicity of life. And he shows us a great lesson. And with this I finish. Joseph, the lesson of Joseph is to show that it is very simple to become a saint. What is difficult is to be simple. Amen. Thank you, His Lordship Bishop. Bishop Amesema, religious life. See your nini? See your insurance company. Kwa hivyo, we need a lot of prayers. And uh, now, Sister Beatrice, kama bado unamua kuendelea, you will come here in front and Bishop will, inter, will question you. Dear Sister Beatrice, in baptism, you have died to sin and have been consecrated to God's service. Are you now resolved to consecrate yourself more closely to God by the bond, the bond of perpetual profession? I am. Are you resolved with the help of God to undertake that life of perfect chastity, obedience, poverty, and the vow to help the sick even at the risk of your life for themselves by Christ our Lord and the Virgin Mother and to persevere in it forever. I am. Dear sister, do you want to bind yourself constantly to follow the gospel and to observe the constitution and the general disposition of the sister ministers of the sick of San Camillo's in order to attain charity towards God and your neighbor? Yes, I do. Do you want, with the grace of the Holy Spirit, to dedicate your whole life to the service of the sick, following the example of San Camillo's and of Blessed Maria Domenica Brun Barbantini? Yes, I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment before the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us pray to God the Father, who gives us everything that is good. In his mercy may he strengthen this, his daughter, in the purpose he has inspired in her. Now let us kneel for the litany of the saints.
Mtu mishi wako, umfanye mtakatifu, na kumweka wako kwa utu mishi wako. Yesu mwana wa Mungu aliye hai Yesu mwana wa Mungu aliye hai Lord, grant the prayers of your people. Prepare the heart of your servants for consecration to your service. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, purify her from all sin and set her on fire with your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we arise. Now, Sister Beatrice will pronounce the vows. I, Sister Beatrice Wagumunwe, moved by the Holy Spirit and believing the love of God and embracing the charism of mercy towards the income, offer my love to God so that He may consecrate it totally to His service. Therefore, into your hands. Never sister Rebecca Adiango Otieno, delegated by the Superior General, in the presence of the sisters and the faithful, I profess to God forever the vows of chastity, poverty, obedience, and of serving the sick even at the risk of life, according to the Constitution and the general directives of the congregation of the sister. Ministers of the income of St. Camerons. I ask you, sisters and brothers, to help me so that I may live my religious vocation with the grace of the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Sorrowful Virgin, of the Holy Father Camerons, and of Blessed Mother Maria Domenica. My dear sister, you are now full member of this religious family of the sister ministers of the sick of St. Camillas. From now on, we share everything in common. Sasa Sister Bistris Ataweka Sahihi Wanye Chakua Ameamua Kabisa Kua Oh, 
Friday. Lord God, creator of the world and father of all mankind, we honor you with praise and thanksgiving, for you chose the people from the stock of Abraham and consecrated them to yourself, calling them by your name. While they wandered in the wilderness, your word gave them comfort and your right hand protection. When they were poor and despised, you united them to yourself in covenant of love. When they strayed from your friendship, your mercy led them back to the right way. When they sought you, your fatherly care looked after them until they came to dwell in the land of freedom. But above all, Father, we thank you for revealing the knowledge of your truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our brother, born of the Virgin Mary. By dying, he ransomed your people from sin, and by rising again, he showed them the glory that would one day be their own. When he took his place at your right hand, he sent the Holy Spirit to call countless disciples to follow the evangelical counsels and consecrated their lives to the glory of your name and the salvation of all mankind. Today, it is right that your house should echo with a new song of thanksgiving for this sister, this sister of ours who has listened to your voice and made herself an offer to your own service. Lord, Send the gift of your Holy Spirit upon your servant, Beatrice, who has left all things for your sake. Father, may her life reveal the face of Christ, your Son, so that all who see her may come to know that he is always present in your church. We pray that in the freedom of her heart, she may be free to care the hearts of others in helping the afflicted. May she bring comfort to Christ suffering in his brethren. May she look upon the world and see it ruled by your loving wisdom. May the gift she makes of herself hasten the coming of your kingdom 
and make her one at last with your saints in heaven. Amen. Sasa Sister Beatrice atakaribishwa kwenye maisha ya religious life. Kwa hiyo Bishop atamsalimia, Supili atamsalimia na masista wengine watampatia sign of peace as a sign of welcome to the religious life. So our sisters, some of our sisters, chameleons, can come also to greet Sister Beatrice to show us to show her fraternal life, fraternal love, na tumkaribishe katika maisha yetu kama papecho member. Thank you. Wazazi pia, wazazi, narikwa, kumpatia baraka, na sign of peace. Angela, karibu isarimia ya assistant. Now at this juncture we want to recognize our sisters who are celebrating their faithfulness and perseverance in religious life for 25 years. They are great people. I will just invite them to stand one by one and then after they will renew their consecration. So Sister Patricia Kwambuka Omwamba. Sister Patricia is the daughter of the late Mr. Ernest Omwamba and the late Anne Imbera. She's from Kisi Diocese, Tabaka Parish. She joined the Chameleon Sisters in the year 1992, made her first profession in the year 1997, and perpetual profession in 2003. She did her studies in Don Bosco and then in Tangaza University College. She has worked in Ongata Rongai in Gong Diocese, Masai Lane Community in Nairobi, Wajia Rehabilit Rehabilitation Center in Garissa Diocese, and currently she's working in Molo Community, Nakuru Diocese. Sister Rebecca Adiambo Otieno. She's the daughter of the late Anton Otieno and the late Rai Otieno. She hails from Homabi Diocese, Ringa Parish. She joined the congregation in the year 1992 and did her first profession in 1997. She worked in the formation house as a formator and as a vocation animator, after which she was transferred to Italy, where she served in the home for the aged in Turin and Viareggio, those are two places in Italy. 
She did her studies of philosophy and theology at the Gregorian University in Rome. She has served in the congregation as the general council member in Italy, Rome. She was then transferred back to Kenya last year when she was elected as the delegate superior of Kenya. The office that she's now holding, she's now our delegate superior. So they will now renew their consecration. As you have heard, they have really worked in our congregation. So they will renew their consecration. Sister Patricia Kwamboko Omwamba, Sister Rebecca Adiambo Otieno, moved by the Holy Spirit, believing in God's love and embracing the charism of mercy towards the infirm, on the 25th anniversary of my religious consecration, I give thanks to the Lord who has kept me in this holy service. I intend to renew my consecration and promise to continue living in chastity, poverty, obedience, and to serve the sick even at the risk of life, according to the constitutions and the general directives of the congregation of the ministers of the infirm of St. Camillus. I ask you, sisters and brothers, to help me so that I may live my religious vocation with the grace of the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Sorrowful Virgin, of Holy Father Camillus, and of Blessed Mother Maria Dominica. Amen. We now continue with the offer to listen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to all the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, on the solemnity of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this young man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set us as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angel praised your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed therapy worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we are praying. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
de misterio y fe. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who are died in your mercy, and welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be prayers to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And the Savior's command are formed by divine teaching to be there to say. Who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver, O Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
person does the final profession, there are blessings that are sent from the Vatican because she has now become a member of the congregation. So I will invite the bishop to hand over those purple blessings to Sister Beatrice and also to our sisters. The Holy Father Francis cordially imparts the request of apostolic blessing to Sister Vitri one boy Monroe, sisters, minister of the sick of San Camilo, on the occasion of her profession of perpetual vows, and through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, involves an abundance of divine graces. St. John the Evangelist Parish, Karen, Nairobi, Kenya, 19th of March, 2022. Sister Patricia. Father Francis paternally imparted the requested apostolic blessing to Sister Rebecca Adia Bortiero, Sisters, Minister of the Sick of San Camilo, on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of her religious profession and to the intercession of the Virgin Mary, involves an abundance of divine graces. San John the Evangelist Paris Car in Nairobi, Kenya, March 19, 2022. <laughs> the Holy Father Francis in pass the requested apostolic blessing to Sister Patricia Tomboka Umamba, Sister Minister of the Sick of San Camilo, on the occasion on the 25th anniversary of her religious profession, and through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, invokes an abundance of divine graces, St. John the Evangelist Paris Karen Nairobi, Kenya, March 19, 2022. So, so let us pray. Defend we compel in the protection. We pray. The family you have nourished, which comes from the altar, and they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph, and graciously keep saying you are gift among them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I wish to invite Sister Beatrice. Aje atueleze vile anahisi atupe sikiti yake. Wakati alilala hapa e, si kuambia kuwa ilikuwa a sign of surrender kuwa amesarenda mambo yote. Sasa ameamua kumtumikia Mungu na yeye sasa ni wa Yesu. Hmm? E, ameanza hayo yote, hayo mengine yote. Kwa hiyo kama kulikuwa na mtu ako na mipango sasa pole sana. <laughs> Our Bishop, Lord River Mayor, dear priests, relatives, religious men and women, friends and beloved people of God, good afternoon. God is good and all the time. Indeed, He is great and awesome, for He has gathered. And united us here to celebrate the gift of life 
Ours is a joy of religious vocation. I'm happy for you, my sisters. Congratulations, Sister Rebecca and Sister Patricia, for the 25 years of faithfulness in the religious life. It was indeed joy being with you and sharing life experiences during our ongoing formation, the renewal program in Nakuru. I learned a lot from you, and I'm confident saying yes, because you assured me that with God, everything is possible. <coughs> May God bless you with many more years in religious life. I greet you then, the communion sisters, for making this day as wonderful and amazing as it is for all the friends. Looking back from my first stage that Sister Nancy told us I joined in 2008, I've been accompanied by different sisters and I'm happy to hear that my dad can be able to recall all these stages from aspirancy, posturancy, novitiate, junior it. It is a sign that you have been accompanying me with your prayers and indeed, I can still recall your accommodation letter. A sign that when you're writing that letter, you did bless me and you kept praying for me. May God bless my formators for warming, for molding me in the light of the word of God. Of course, there are some few difficulties here and there, but the ability to love, to forgive, grows when we are buried. I indeed feel favor and formed by the spirit of the church and even from the homily of our bishop here. Again, looking back, I entered the novitiate during the year of faith. That was back 2013. I did my first profession during the, the year of the consecrated and now I'm making my perpetual profession in the year of similarity. The spirit of the church has been forming me and helping me to grow spiritually and even physically. May God bless you abundantly, the ministers of the infant, for your generosity, great love, and care. To my spiritual director and my friends, thank you for your input in my life. I'm indeed happy and grateful to God for the gift of family. I can see my extended family. Yeah, I can see my another father here, Moses Mwenda, Francis Kamau. I can see a good number from my village, from a St. Anthony Parish, from Charles Ronda, you are here to celebrate with me. In addition to bringing me up in Christian values, you have supported me in this general faith. Joining the Cambodian sister remained one of my happiest and unforgettable moments. I strongly desire to be a Cambodian sister. And I really do remember the questions that were posed to me by my parents back then. Why the Cambodian sister? In fact, we are calling it Cambodian. A very new congregation to us? Why not? The ones we know, we know the Dimesa sister, and also the Nazareth. Why this chameleon, chameleon? Can't you go to what we know? But then, I'm happy that even when I insisted that I want to go to chameleon sister, they pressed me and have continued to support me. Even though I was just a home for river, I didn't have any money to make for all that I needed for joining. But they provided whole hatedry. How later in my postulancy, just as I was getting my postulancy, I got a very serious price. And this way I, I, I reflected back. And when I was uh, at home, I expressed this to my parents. I told them now, I don't want to go back to the Canadian sister any longer. And uh, I just want to stay at home and be different. And my mom reminded me, when you are joining, you insisted, and I bought you a very expensive bag. 
So just go back, get the bag, and come. And as you have heard, I was honest, I was honest with my family. So I did uh, come back from the bag. But when I was back, I prayed. And uh, through God's graces, I was able to reflect and see that I was dreaming because my colleagues were living. And so that's how I found myself as a weary in the formation and in this religious family. So the desire was still with me. And the prayers of my friend, the family, continues to ask. Ask people to pray for you. And I believe God will do great things. I implore God's blessing to my siblings, Father Ezra, my firstborn, Bonfas, and Angela. You have been true friends who have challenged me in different ways. Thank you, Father Ezra, for the smart so many years that you have brilliantly prepared for me. And I always have as a memory of my things here today. And I believe each one of us will get a copy before the end of the day. So count on my prayers. I do free thank St. Aurasia's community. Father Richard, with me here. Father Terry, in his absentia. Madam Beatrice, the principal. And, and the entire family in St. Aurasia's. I've seen Moses and Anne with us here. Thank you so, so much. The three months a leave of absence from teaching has been of great help in my perpetual commitment. The impact of this maternity leave, eh? <laughs> <laughs> So when I was being given this demand, I was uh, given the, uh, there was no other leave of absence from the teaching uh, forum, so I was given the maternity leave, eh? <laughs> So the maternity leave is, the, in, is uh, of great help. And the joy is this great feast in celebration of vocation and you life in the church. Thank you so, so much from deep down my heart. Now, a message to the young men and women. We have uh, two students who are dancing here, the aspirant. I can see people information here. Trust in God. Cast all your worries unto him. God has a great plan for you. Thank for his will in your life and joy will be yours. To all Christian from Hamadi Diocese, Kisi Diocese, Minahururu Diocese, and all our friends, the choir, Kendo Choir, you have made me proud. Thank you for honoring our invitation and taking part in this great celebration. Mine is a thanksgiving prayer for you. And may God bless you in all your endeavors. I thank Bishop Rodrigo for gracing this feast. I pray for me, pray for us, that we may live in that simplicity in this vocation. And may St. Joseph, St. Carmiras, pray for us. Thank you so much, Sister Beatrice, for sharing with us your experience. And as you have heard it, you have uh, advised those who are in formation. I want to, work, to add one thing out of what she has, she has shared. Eh? That she wanted to leave because others were leaving. But God was in his own way. Those who are in formation, remember that you are called alone. You came here and met others, but... You came from your home alone, you carried your bag, whether expensive or cheap, you carried it alone and you came here. So, don't see the others leaving and you start following them. Yeah? So, if you have entered in, your, in Matato, reach destination where you are going. Don't be worried when you are going to Rafu, Wanabaki. So, just follow your destination, follow where you are going and keep focused wherever you are. In, in the beginning where you had thoughts to go. Why do you na watu? Ato ukibaki peke yako, just continue alone. Sister Beatrice has journeyed alone from postulancy, mpaka sahi, na kuwa ito roka. Kwa sababu anajua, alihitwa peke yake. Tumpigie makofi kwa hana. 
So those who are in formation, even if you remain alone, kaza mwendo. Hii safari ni kukaza mwendo. Sawa sawa. Vocation is personal. So I want now to to, to call upon Sister Rebecca. Unless kuna mtu mwingine ako na burning issue yenye hawezi kumilia aende bila kusema hakuna. So I invite Sister Rebecca to come. She will give her speech and then after she will invite the bishop to give his comment. <laughs> I'm laughing because then I have to invite the bishop again to give another home. No, because you need it to God is good and all the time. To mechoka. To mechoka. Unajoto. I know we are very much tired. But I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that all these faces that are now looking at me, tired, smiling, but satisfied because of they've seen what they came to see. I'm thrilled. As I was listening to your Lordship give the homily, I was touched. One thing he said that remained with me, whether two years, 25 years, how many years, the consecration is the same. Did you get that one? So, I'm really very happy. Being who I am, it's because I come from a family. And I'm happy because families journey with us. I was happy to hear the family of Sister uh, Beatrice give their testimony of their daughter. The family of Sister Patricia give their testimony of their daughter and their sister. And uh, the family of the little Tieno. Did they give their testimony? Did they? But because they have molded me, as I stand there, I know they are smiling where they are. They are smiling because me, I was molded. I'm always blessed to have two mothers and a father. And even though they went, I still, even today, I have two mothers and a father. My father, can you stand and let people see you? That is my elder brother who came all the way. He has been come accompanying me ever since. The first profession, he was the first one to arrive. Until final, I, was, I did in Rome, but when I came back, he was the first to arrive. So he is always there. And the mama, the busy mama, but that is the first mama now. And then the second mama, Sister Veronica. May you see? Greet the people. I come from a big family, yes? But we were only few girls. And these few girls, two are called to serve in the religious life. She's my, I'm her fourth follower. So you see, I have my sister and I have my nephew coming back. We continue praying for him. It's not something to be proud of because it is a service. <laughs> After that, I would like really to, because many things have been said and there are things that are touching and I would not want to add any, an inch, an inch of what has been said. I just want to say welcome very much in this uh, community of the Chameleon Sisters, they call me the Delegate Superior, but me I like being called the Elder Sister, because I want always to be the Elder Sister. I never enjoyed being the Elder Sister because there are many Elder ones, I'm the last, 
week in my family. But I enjoy now being the elder sister and not the mother because I have many mothers. So welcome and feel at home. Be blessed as you stay with us. Do not run away because the Chameleon sisters will be with you until we finish our feast. God is good all and all the time. Thank you very much and I now welcome my Lordship uh, Bishop Rodrigo Mia. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Mario, what is a mother? Ave Mario, the 